The last question I'll ask before we open it up um, is to do with social media and the rise of social media. How do you see that uh, impacting uh, our lives? And as uh, broadband connectivity uh, grows, and it's growing at a rapid pace in India, I think uh, a billion Indians will be connected and uh, could be participants in this big net as it were. I even met the person who started this Facebook thing. And uh, you know, about, uh, about eight months ago, I was telling my daughter, show me this, what is this Facebook I've never seen. He said, oh, this is not for you. I said, why is it not for me? Am I so ancient that I can't book up somebody's face? He said, that's not it <laughs> He said, that's not it, you are anyway connecting with millions of people just like that. So why do you need Facebook, she said. I said, but I want to see what it is. She said, no, it's not for you, it's just rubbish. Then I said, it's rubbish, why do you go on it? <laughs> she says, I have no other way to connect. you just connecting with people like this, so you don't have to go on it. I have no other way to connect, so I go on it. And my time on the Facebook is from I have this, she was telling me, it's from the age of sixteen, now she's twenty-two, she said, it is reducing for me because I am able to connect better as the day go, days go by. And uh, when I was sixteen, I couldn't connect with anybody, so I was always on the Facebook. Now I'm able to connect better, so I'm going off the Facebook gradually, but I'm keeping it like a little bit. So in some way, from her… her wisdom, I'm understanding this, some way, if you're not able to get along with people who are sitting right next to you right now, you would like to connect with somebody far away. It's safe. It… it is… it is… it doesn't cost anything. If you have to fall in love with the person who is next to you right now, it costs life. You have to give away a part of your life, otherwise it's not going to work. You can love somebody in New Zealand. <laughs> Every day he will write love letters to you, you can write love letters to him. You don't even know whether it's a man or a woman because <laughs> we do not know how many faces he has. <laughs> And it is a kind of an entertainment and a distraction. This is not new, I want you to understand. People have been doing this for a long time. Now this Facebook or long distance love affair is not a new thing. People have been doing this in their own way without technology. Now they're using technology. I'm not saying it's wrong, but I'm saying it may make people very remote islands in the world that they think sitting in their room, they're having a great relationship with the world without ever knowing what human transaction is. Because every human being has to learn human transaction, because if you do not learn human tra transaction, you will not become a human being, you will become a psychological being, a mass of nonsense in your head and you think that's everything. Only when you transact with people, when there is giving and taking and the borders are crossed and somebody irritates you, somebody steps on your leg and somebody steps on your head and they do all kinds of things. When they do all these kinds of things, you understand your limitations, your boundaries, your struggles. This is very needed for human growth. In some way, in one way it is enhancing, but in another way it is making lots of people uh, a kind of islands. So what I would say is, technology has no a uh, quality of its own, it's just an enabling. How we use it, it can be… it can make us or it can break us. So it is left to the individual and it is left to the cultures, left to the educational institutions and edu people who are educators who are involved in it, to bring this awareness into the child that technology is made for our well-being, not to destroy ourselves. If this is taught to every child, I think they will use it in a positive way. Thank you.